Hi guys. Today I'm going to be talking about Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. Okay, so I actually finished Oathbringer. I can't believe it. I know. I know. Also, I kind of can't believe that I waited so long to read this series. So Oathbringer. It probably took me the entire month of February to actually get through it. I raced through Way of Kings, I raced through Words of Radiance, and I should also say that I recently discovered graphic audio, and this is not a plug, I just really love them. Um, I heard the first two books that way, and the third one I had in a different format. Wow, it was so drastically different, and I really think that maybe why for me, Oathbringer was a four star read, It maybe even a three and a half star because the first 20 hours were just so slow for me. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the political background and this book gives you a lot of that at the beginning. So you're following the same characters, you obviously get a couple different ones introduced, you get some really cool spotlights into some characters, and I will say, Brandon Sanderson, I am someone that loves good character work. I can read a book just with, you know, where nothing happens and it's just character work. That I love that. Brandon Sanderson is amazing. I'm planning a reread of the Starlight Archive, the Stormlight Archive, get the name right, jeez. So I'm planning a reread of the Stormlight Archive later in the season, but I want to do it kind of maybe started around the summer because I want to do it a little bit closer to the release of the fourth book, which is I think The Rhythm of War, which I'm so excited about now that I, now that I've read this one and know what that means. I don't know, like truly, I don't know what took me so long to get here. Anyway, so this one really follows, um, this book, I, I don't think I can do this without giving some kind of spoiler at least, maybe, hopefully not. Anyway, this follows the war between the humans and the Parshendi and the desolation essentially has come in this one and it's them sort of figuring out how they need to go about winning this war pretty much. Um, there's a lot more about the Knights Radiance and the Heralds coming out on this one. You can definitely see that Sanderson is creating a story that is so layered that we are getting some stuff in the first and second books that you know are gonna come out in the later, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm living for it. I'm so excited. So um, this follows Dalinar Kolin, his family, Adolin, his son, Kaladin, who is one of the leaders of the guard and also one of his bridgemen. We follow his story from the first book. He's actually my favorite character, but I think maybe that's partially what also I didn't love so much about this book. His story or his, his character arc in this one, I found it the least compelling of all the other ones so far. Dalinar Kolin's story is masterful in this one. The way that Brandon Sanderson takes the reader on a journey where you feel like these are the good guys to then only find out that really they are the war bringers is insane. It, it just, where it takes you as a reader to kind of understanding how you feel about these characters to where it leaves the characters feeling about themselves is magnificent. I mean, magnif- like I can't say enough about it. Truly the only reason that I'm giving this, that I would even give it a 3.5 or 4 is because I just was so underwhelmed by the first part. I understand it, I get it, I understand that you have to set things up, and I'm sure as I go back and read it, I don't actually think I'm gonna dislike those parts quite so much. I think I'll be able to, I, I think they'll, I, I mean, I, I can't even wait until I read it again, truly. I literally, it's one of the things I think about. I am I consider whether I want to just restart it all over right away, but I wanna wait because I know it also took me a month to get through with Bringer. I actually think this time I want to physically read them. You can see I have one of the books behind me, um, so I'll be getting the other two to do that. I just think that, I don't know, I just think it's gonna be amazing. I think I'm gonna pick up so much more. I think it's gonna be incredible. It really is. Because you can just see, like, this, he's amazing as a writer. Like, it's just, it's, for that matter, it's just so nice to read. I, 
will read things kind of in between as well. And some of the things I read didn't live up to, or didn't even come close, didn't light a candle to anything near what this is. So, um, some of the work, you know, okay, let me just tell you, I don't like Shalon. I find her to be the most irritating, but actually in this one, I probably found her journey to be one of the more compelling because I think she's going to, I, I find her character, while I don't like her and I find her really annoying, I understand why she's written kind of the way she is. I also think she's going to be one of the most interesting evolutions of a character going forward. I think the stuff that Sanderson is going to put her through as a character and kind of dealing with the like, do we know whether she's good or bad? Does she know whether she's good or bad? Is going to be super interesting. Um, I really like Yasna. I'm glad she came back. I really am. Uh, there are some super interesting, they, some of the new characters that get introduced in this one are awesome. Also, Assassin in White I can't even put into words what I feel about that. I mean, truly, it probably took me, I think I finished it maybe a week and a half ago or more because obviously, you know, I'm, I don't need to say it, things are happening at the moment that are a little scary. Um, I couldn't even, I can't even, let alone comprehending that, I can't even handle what I read. Like this is, I'm just, I'm exactly speechless after this book. It's just, it ended so, every part of the last, the, the first, the last 20 hours so blew the first 30 out of the water that just that alone made everything about it worth it. Um, there are some really cool reveals in it. It, it, re I, yeah, it read the slowest for me. It was the least interesting. I'm not a huge fan of political discussions or how they're dealing with the politics. However, some of those were the coolest reveals, some of the most interesting parts. I love how Sanderson gives really huge information throughout the book to some of the smaller characters. I think it's, and I don't even wanna say smaller characters because that seems rude, but it, to characters that are not necessarily the main couple ones that you're following. And I also like, okay, yes, I love Kaladin and I actually find all of the, his is kind of, a, a lot of these feel a little bit tropey to me, but I'm not mad about it. I'm not upset. I'm, I think they're great. Um, I love Adolin's character. I love everything about Adolin's character. I, I don't honestly know how I feel about Adolin and Shalon just because I'm just like not down for her, but Adolin's character, I love. Oh, I love. I think he is going to, I, man, I hope he writes him as amazing as he writes Dalinar because Dalinar is outstanding. I also think like, yeah, while I think the work with Dalinar was insane on this one, he isn't the one that I find the most compelling. And maybe that was why this book was such a struggle for me ultimately. However, he does give Dalinar's, Dalinar, excuse me, the backstory he gives to Dalinar is, oh, it is, it's hard. It's hard and it's real and it makes everything so worth it. Anyway, guys, this was the most terrible review of Oathbringer, but ultimately I wanted to share my thoughts with you and kind of what I felt about it. I don't think I articulated myself particularly well about any of those, but that kind of tells you where I kind of stand with all the characters. So if you want to talk to me about where you stand with some of these characters, how it made you feel, I'd love to hear it. Let me know in the comments. See you guys next time.